Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for City of Greensboro news and information. The City of Greensboro will continue its long-standing tradition of hosting the Memorial Stair Climb. This event will commemorate the 21st anniversary of the tragic events of September 11th. The climb starts at 9 a.m. and will take place on Saturday, September 10th. This brings the community together to honor the multitude of public safety personnel who perished at the World Trade Center in New York City. Residents are invited to participate in the event at the Bellmead parking deck located at 220 North Green Street. Registration begins at 7.30 a.m. Participants have the option of climbing the flights of stairs at the Bellmead deck nine times, which represents 73 flights of stairs. This is symbolic and equivalent to the highest floor New York Fire Department firefighters reached on 9-11. This year, participants will be able to use their cell phone to access and complete an online participation waiver with a QR code. Specially designed t-shirts will be sold before the event for $15. For more information about the event, visit the Greensboro Fire Department Facebook page. As you drive around town, it looks like construction is happening at every turn. Do you wonder what's being built on a street you drive by frequently? Perhaps you want to check the permit status of the addition you're putting on your home. To answer these types of questions about building permits and development in Greensboro, the city has created a new online portal called Plan Review Status. This web portal allows you to track the status of plans that have been submitted into the city's permit review system for approval and subsequent construction. The portal can be accessed from a few different areas on the city's website, including the Development Services Office, the Planning Department, and the Engineering and Inspections Department. Simply search for information about the status of a project by typing in the address of the project, the name of the applicant who submitted the plan, or the plan ID number assigned when the plan was submitted. Plan review status is the residential version of the city's plan review and tracking, which is an electronic plan upload and review system used by commercial developers and contractors. Creative Greensboro, the city's office for arts and culture, will award $400,000 through its new Sustaining Creativity Community Partnership Grant. The money supports general operations, administration, and programs for nonprofit organizations with a primary focus on creative programming. This opportunity is designed to extend resources to groups not currently receiving significant support from the city of Greensboro. Several information sessions will be held today through September 13th. The deadline to apply is Saturday, October 22nd. A panel led by Greensboro Cultural Affairs Commissioners will evaluate applications. Grants of $20,000 will be awarded to organizations recommended for support. A limited number of organizations may be recommended for an additional five or $10,000 for their efforts toward creative vibrancy and community benefit as defined in the program guidelines and evaluated by the review panel. For the application and additional grant requirements and to register for an information session, visit the city's website. Cone Health has partnered with the city to share a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Following these tips is an easy way to help each of us improve our quality of life. Let's take a moment to check out today's news for your health. Hi, I'm Laura Watson, Registered Dietitian with Cone Health Nutrition and Diabetes Education. There are a lot of mixed messages out there about healthy eating, so today we're going to unpack some do's and don'ts about healthy eating and how to make smart food choices. Because there are so many mixed messages about health and nutrition, um, it can be very confusing. Do be very selective about what you believe about health and nutrition. Do make sure that your information is coming from a licensed nutrition professional and that they are credentialed to give you that nutrition advice. Do be very wary of any fad diets. 
95% of diets do not work. They are unsuccessful in the long term and cause weight regain. So do follow a balanced diet with a variety of different things and do include different types of food groups. We want to follow the general My Plate recommendations that incorporate a variety of different things, grains and proteins and vegetables, fruits and dairy products. Unless there is a medical reason why you need to avoid a certain food group, do not restrict your intake of any major food group. When we're talking about grains, we want to choose whole grains. So that includes things like oatmeal and whole wheat cereals, quinoa, whole wheat crackers, okay? What we're looking for, guys, is in the ingredients list, we're looking for whole grains. So the very first ingredient should be whole. It could be whole wheat, it could be whole oat, it could be whole quinoa, it could be whole rice, but what we want to do is have the first word be whole. That's gonna give you the most fiber and the most B vitamins. When we're talking about fats, we wanna choose heart healthy, unsaturated fats. That's gonna be things like olive oil, or your Smart Balance or Promise Spread. These are made from vegetable-based spreads, so they are not going to have any saturated or trans fat that increase your heart risk. We wanna stay away from your saturated and trans fats. Now, most food companies have, have taken trans fats out of their products or have marketed that there's no trans fats, but it can be misleading. So in this product, it says that there's no trans fats, but if you look at the ingredients list, they can be hidden and they're called hydrogenated oils. And those is just a tricky word for trans fat. So we do want to avoid those types of products and stick with more of the heart healthy liquid type things when we're doing our cooking and our seasoning. For your meats, we want to choose meats that have less marbling on them. So those are the white spots. So we want to choose things like um, poultry and fish more often. Lots of brightly colored fruits and vegetables. So fresh, um, frozen without sauce, Canned is fine as long as you dump out that um, the liquid that's in the can and wash that off because that's really high in sodium. When we are eating, we want to practice mindful eating. So it's not just what you eat, but it's how you eat when we're talking about being healthy and making healthy eating choices. So a lot of us today are very, very busy and a lot of times we eat more than what our bodies actually need when we're eating so quickly. So intuitive eating means sitting down at a table, turning off the TV, putting away your tablet, putting away the computer or the work, and taking a break to actually enjoy your meal. Take smaller bites. Savor that food that you're eating. Taste it. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it spicy? Does it need some salt? Do you even really like what you're eating? Make sure that you're actually enjoying that. Chew your food slowly. Put your fork down in between bites. Take a sip of your beverage in between bites. Make the meal last at least 20 or 30 minutes as it takes 20 minutes for the signal from your stomach to reach your brain and tell you that you're full. As you're eating, check in with yourself mentally and see where you are in your fullness cues. As you're getting comfortably full, stop. Make sure that you are getting adequate hydration as well because sometimes we feel like we're hungry when we're actually thirsty. So keep your bottle of water with you at all times and take sips of it throughout the day so that you can stay hydrated and focused. I hope you found these tips helpful. For more information, please visit us at conehealth.com slash healthy eating. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Laura Watson. Parking fines can be waived if you make a donation to a local nonprofit, and the latest Grow Residency spotlights personal well being paired with caring for community. We'll have those stories and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. If you received a parking ticket recently, here's a way you can offset paying it while supporting a good cause. The City of Greensboro is accepting new and unwrapped school supplies or a cash donation to the Guilford Education Alliance Teacher Supply Warehouse. This donation will serve as payment for parking ticket fines issued today through September 30th. Donations must be made within 30 days of receiving the infraction, 
Please note, handicap parking violations are not included in this program. All donated school supplies must be brought to the Greensboro Parking Office located in the main lobby of the Melvin Municipal Office Building at 300 West Washington Street. Cash donations are accepted online and can be made directly to the Teacher Supply Warehouse website. Citation holders must show a receipt to verify the donation, the value of the school supplies, which must be equal to or greater than the parking fine. This is the third year the City of Greensboro has partnered with Guilford Education Alliance to support local teachers. The Teacher Supply Warehouse allows Guilford County school teachers to shop for items at no cost up to four times a year. Artist and activist Bevelyn Yuka is partnering with the North Carolina Climate Justice Collective to produce a new GROW residency at the Greensboro Cultural Center. The residency is open through September 18th and includes open art making sessions and specialized workshops. Topics range from connecting with our bodies through a Zumba class to a celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. Yuka will co-create interactive spaces that explore the intersection of art and climate justice. Through public art making sessions, workshops, and an exhibit, Bevelin will facilitate conversations that drive awareness about living with more intentional action for personal and community care. Yuka is a self-taught artist and part of the Black Women's Art Collective of Public Art Practice. She also works as a consultant to train youth and adults in building skills that encourage equity, organizational efficiency, cultural connection, and collaboration. All events are free to attend and registration is not required. GROW is located next to the Davie Street entrance of the Greensboro Cultural Center at 200 North Davie Street. For more information about the GROW residency, visit the city's website. The Greensboro Parks and Recreation Department is partnering with the Greensboro Parks Foundation to host the 13th annual Downtown Greenway Run and Block Party. The event will take place from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 8th in Lo-Fi Park. Registration is open for the one-mile fun run, walk, and stroll, along with the four-mile timed race. Dogs are welcome. Proceeds support downtown Greenway operations and community programs. People of all ages may participate in either event. Participants will receive an event t-shirt, refreshments, and drink tickets for soda, juice, water, or beer. The entire community is invited to the block party featuring a DJ and food trucks. There will also be children's activities, sponsor tents with giveaways, local vendor booths, and prize drawings. Lo-Fi Park is located at 500 North Eugene Street. For more information about the Downtown Greenway, visit the agency's website. The minority and women-owned business community has an opportunity to position to propel, taking business to the next level. Coming up after the break, find out what's in store for this year's MedWeek activities. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Minority Enterprise Development, or MedWeek, is recognized across the country each year. This is a time for local government and universities to stand up resources as a way to support small businesses. Joining me now to tell us how MedWeek has expanded is Maria Hicksview. She is the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer for the City of Greensboro. Hello, Maria. Welcome to the show. Hi, Carla. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining me. So for people who are not familiar, what is the basis of MedWeek? The basis of MedWeek is to ensure that minorities and women are afforded the opportunity to gather and to also make sure that their businesses are showcased and also have an educational piece as well. This is done not just in Greensboro, not just in Guilford County, but it's done across the state of North Carolina and it's actually done across the nation. So typically we do a week, but uh, with everything that's been going on lately, we decided this year we're gonna have a packed day and have med week, but we're gonna have a special day and do that day. So okay. it's very exciting. This 
a, a day within the week, it still works. It still works, it does. So tell me, how has the MedWeek initiative expanded and how does its reach impact our community? Certainly, a few years ago, we started off with it being the Greensboro brand. Um, we worked very hard on making sure that brand was out there. We had people to come, actually participate in the activities. And then we decided we are a triad. We are the Piedmont triad, as we love to say. So we actually reached out to some of our partners that were already working with us, Guilford County, Guilford County Schools, North Carolina A&T, um, UNCG, and most of all, the city of High Point. And we all have been working on the last two years, this project, and we decided to rebrand ourselves as the Piedmont Triad Minority Economic Development um, Week and Committee, I guess we should say. So we've been working very hard over the last year and a half. Absolutely, and I think the idea of expanding and really being reflective of the triad is so important because we do want that inclusiveness with each of our minority and women-owned businesses. Now, you do have a theme each year. What is your theme this year and why is it significant? We had the best marketing team ever. And just a little hint to the audience, this is the chair of the marketing team. So, of course, it was the best theme ever. Position, Check it in the mail. There it is, there it is. Position to propel. And what that simply means is with everything that happened with COVID, with everything that's happened to minority businesses, women-owned businesses, and even small businesses, we are trying to give you with this day of workshops and networking the tools you need to propel yourself to make your business even bigger, better, and stronger. Wonderful. I love it. Position to propel. And not just because I came up with the of theme. Of course not. But of course not. It's so important to keep our businesses motivated and to know that they, to let them know that we support them. Now, what can attendees look forward to in this action packed day? Oh, I'm so excited. First of all, they can look forward to some of our local officials being there, welcoming them, also being very um, supportive of the initiatives as well. But we've got some great speakers. We've got some speakers from the state. We've got some great speakers from the Chamber of Commerce. We also have some speakers coming in that are going to tell about some various funding sources. And the best thing, you know, Carla, I love to network. So we're going to have a speed networking session where you are guaranteed to meet someone and leave that day with something um, as far as a partner or an accountability partner when you leave that day. So I don't want to tell too much, yes. but it's going to be fun. And there's lunch involved. And there's lunch. What, yes. What better way than <laughs> to eat? So, yes. Now, with events like this, we often want sponsors to get involved. Mm -hmm. is, is there still an opportunity for that? And if so, how can they support this event? Absolutely. We have a website, um, and it ties to uh, the theme of Piedmont Triad Med Week. So you can definitely, we can probably send that out to anyone who wants to know. We have a sponsor packet and you can contact us um, the Office of Equity and Inclusion for the city of Greensboro and we can definitely send that out and there's also a link to contact us on that website for the Piedmont Triad Med Week. Perfect and I'm assuming that's how you get details about everything going on Absolutely. for Piedmont Triad Med, Med Week. Yes, everything. Okay, in there. well so we've got the website on the screen, we have your contact information in your office and we thank you for stopping by to let us know about Med Week, how important it is and then of course the Piedmont Triad um, launching, I guess, of this new moniker that you have, and I'm sure the event will be a huge success. That's what we're counting on, and we have a couple of surprises, too, during the lunch hour, so okay. definitely people need to be there. And did we tell them when? This is October 5th? We said all that, and we didn't even say what yes. day it was. It's October 5th, <laughs> and it is um, at the Revolution Mills, the Colonnade Room, so we are definitely looking forward to having a great crowd, yes. good lunch, and good fellowship. Wonderful. Well, do come back and let us know how we can support similar initiatives. Absolutely. Thank you, Carl. Carla. Thank you. Stay tuned for some interesting and useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact you and our city is by attending or tuning in to City Council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The City Council has resumed meeting in the Katie Dorsett Council Chamber on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The public is allowed in person but only in a limited capacity. Those who choose not to be in the building can participate virtually. 
The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Greensboro City Council has approved nearly $25 million in funding supported by the Federal American Rescue Plan. This enables the city to address equitable economic recovery and community asset renewal projects. Funding is awarded to local nonprofit organizations for affordable and veterans housing, support for minority and women-owned businesses, entrepreneurs, and community programs. Funds were also designated for critical building maintenance at the Central Library, Greensboro Cultural Center, and City Recreation Pools, as well as the pre-construction costs for the transformational Windsor Chavis Community Complex. This round of projects joins the City Council's previously approved list, which accounts for 42% of the nearly $60 million awarded to the City of Greensboro under the American Rescue Plan. All other projects previously submitted as part of the city's ARP program are still under consideration. The City Council is undergoing the deliberation process to identify the projects most closely aligned with the needs of the community and City Council priorities. For more information about this program and more details on approved ARP projects, visit the city's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, let's see how the city of Greensboro celebrates diversity in the workplace. Equity and inclusion are vital for the city of Greensboro's ability to grow and innovate in such a fast-changing environment. One Greensboro is a monthly show that highlights some of the ways the Office of Equity and Inclusion honors the observances listed on our heritage calendar and spotlights a City of Greensboro employee in a segment we call The One. These observances are an integral part of the National Equal Employment Opportunity and Civil Rights Program and encourage us to live as one people, one community, one Greensboro. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Greensboro Transit Agency is the recipient of state funding which will support its growing alternative fuel fleet. The North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality has awarded more than $1.1 million from the Volkswagen Settlement and Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Fund. This money will replace an aging diesel transit bus with a clean zero emissions electric bus and charging station. In March, the city received $3 million from the Federal Transit Administration for the purchase of three electric buses. These investments in clean fuel vehicles increases the total number of the city's electric bus fleet to 21. Along with a number of existing diesel electric hybrid buses, more than 50% of GTA's fixed route bus fleet consists of sustainable vehicles. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the City of Greensboro. The City's Housing and Neighborhood Development Department's annual report is available. The annual report summarizes progress in permanent supportive housing, affordable housing developments, and pandemic relief efforts. Read about an update on the City's 10-year affordable housing plan titled Housing GSO. Also, the Greensboro Department of Transportation has published its annual report. The report highlights the department's innovative initiatives, key projects, the year's safety data, changes to parking policies, and other news. The report also lists the bicycle, highway, road, and sidewalk projects under construction or completed in the last year. Both reports can be accessed on the city's website. 
That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our 5-Minute Flash Briefings, which airs on 90.1 FM and 100.7 FM. Be sure to download both weekly podcasts, Talk City Greensboro, and Connect GSO. Plus, GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oh, <laughs>